Um, my name's Jason Kirchie and welcome to my YouTube channel, Swell Runner Overland. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, thanks for stopping by and uh, today I've got a real special treat for you. But before uh, we get into it, I just wanted to kind of go over a couple of housekeeping items real quick. Um, firstly, number one, if you're not subscribed to our channel, there's a, a little button right below and just hit the, the subscribe button. Um, secondly, if you like this video, hit the like button and thirdly, uh, if you thought it was it was fun or useful, entertaining, share share with one of your friends or three. Okay, I had a couple of quick notes that I just kind of wanted to go over real fast because today, today, do you remember that Earth Roamer uh, that Earth Roamer video that we made the rig walk around of Overland Ex uh, that we did at Overland Expo East that really really nice seven hundred sixty five thousand dollar Overland vehicle. Well, after I did that walk around video, the owner of the new XVHD, am I, am I getting that right? Yes, the, the, the owner of the, of the new XVHD. See, Earth Roamer came out with a brand new, very, very much, much larger um, Overland vehicle that actually, I, I think the guy that plays Aquaman, I think he bought one. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. This thing is sweet. I had the opportunity to spend some time with the uh, president and CEO, Tyler Tatro. He, he's not the CEO, he's the COO and president of Earth Roamer. Anyway, I had some time, I had uh, the opportunity to spend some time with him. He, would, he was very, very generous with his time and gave me a lot, a lot of detail that I can share with, that I'm, I'm going to share with you guys. But I wanted to address a couple of things just right off the bat because I know that these are going to be the three main things that people are going to bring up. Um, and there's probably no need to be defensive, um, but, but I just wanted to address these things. First, it's a Ford. There's a lot of people, it's a Ford. I don't even know what that means. All of the experience I've had with Fords in the last 10 years has been, has been really, really good. I haven't owned a lot of them, but I have one Ford that I own, uh, two Fords right now. I, I have one at the office and it's fine too, but I have a, a full-size E350 van. We bought it when it was one year old uh, in 2012. So it's now seven years old. It's got 130,000 miles on it and I've, had a couple of problems with like like a fan motor air conditioning thingamajigger, but that but that's it. Like like everything else, it runs. It's a great vehicle. This is built on the Ford uh, F650 platform. Uh, it's a commercial grade platform, I believe, and I just I don't see I don't see any credence to a statement like that. Uh, secondly, can't take it anywhere. Well. This is not a vehicle. If you want to go wheeling, like on Hell's Revenge or down in Moab or some weird get a Jeep or a Forerunner or something like that. You're not going to take a vehicle like this. This is like a giant RV that has four wheel drive. You can take it a lot of places that you can't take a regular full size RV, but there's going to be a lot of places you're not going to take this vehicle. It is what it is. And lastly, one and a half million dollars. I'm not saying I'd ever spend a million and a half dollars on any vehicle. Um, I, I can't afford a million and a half dollar house. I probably never will. But put yourself in the shoes of somebody that had like, say, 50 million bucks. Imagine you were very successful at something and you sold off a company and you had 50 million bucks in your pocket. What would you do with it? Would you spend it on a million and a half dollar overland vehicle? I don't know. If you're into that kind of thing and you got the discretionary income to do it, I don't know. Why not? I mean, all I'm saying is that if somebody wants to spend that kind of money on something, sure, maybe they could go build it for a million dollars or $750,000. But what if they don't want to? What if they don't know how to? What if they want somebody else to do it for them? I'm just saying, like, to each their own, man. You know what I mean? So without further ado, I just wanted to get into this. And um, yeah, I, I hope you really enjoy it. This debuted like at the SEMA show? SEMA show in November, yeah. Okay, so give us some, give us a background. Give us some history. Why is this? How did this come into existence? Yeah, so we, existence? we started kind of playing with this concept years ago. I mean, probably eight years ago of a just a larger scale earth roamer, right? And that's really all it was when it started was just a bigger earth roamer. And then, you know, we refined the XVLTS over the years and came up with a really cool platform, which you, you guys saw on that. And it was like, how do we take that and bring that to the next level? That was kind of the challenge of this build, is, is how do we take that luxury off-grid, off-road camper, bring it to the next level, and just, you know, take it out of the park, basically. So the other one has got a lot. And, you know, there's some comments on, on that video. There's like, why would you spend it? And it's like, 
you don't understand how it works when you get into this. You can't go build one of these for $100,000. Like, it's, it doesn't work that way. That vehicle, the original one, and this one, like, what are some of the primary differences? Is it just larger? Because the other one has so much, like, so much awesomeness. Yeah, that, that, that was kind of part of the challenge. Is that one's pretty awesome. How do you make it awesomer, right? right? Just like, like, a lot of automated stuff and just so much technology and, yeah. and innovation. Yep. So we, this one, we just push that innovation to the next level. So the big difference is, uh, one of the big differences is the electronic system. So this completely new electronic system, uh, lithium ion batteries. So huge deal there, a lot more power. So we get about twice the capacity for the same size and weight of battery, bank, uh, which is just incredible. Um, and it's all touchscreen controlled. So it's all network controlled. So every single circuit is run through modules and we can control that with a touch screen that's mounted in the cabin, in the cab, or an iPad. So we have multiple ways to control it, but that's not even the coolest part. The coolest part is that uh, because we have that, we can build logic into the programming. So in our LTS, what would take an owner, you know, three steps to do, turn on the inverter, turn this on to make coffee, for instance. On this truck, we can just hit one button, go to into what we call a camp mode, and then everything turns on you need for camping and you can control everything else like you would in a, in a regular house. So you, to control the temperature, you use a Nest thermostat instead of, you know, a different interface. So we've kind of put all the, the interfaces into one intuitive touch screen control center. So to make that electrical system even more functional, we came out with what we call a quick charge system. So how this works is when the state of charge gets to 30%, so your batteries are down to 30%, and you have the quick charge mode enabled, the, the engine will start up and it will drive three giant alternators that's gonna produce about 26,000 watts. Wow. So what that allows us to do is recharge this giant battery bank in about 30 minutes. Really? So it'll start, it'll run for 30 minutes, recharge that battery bank, and then we can go another, you know, depending on what we're doing, say we're running full air conditioning, we can go another six hours yeah. before the engine starts again. Okay, so this is the same motor power plant as the other ones. Similar, same displacement, okay. whole different bottom end, different programming. Okay. Uh, so it's a heavier duty version more of of the six seven. Yeah, so they can they can push more power out of out of the same top end, different lower end of the motor. Okay, and then the the in terms of the three alternators, is that something that you guys have done, or is yep. that like an option from Ford? Or? No, that's okay. that's all us. So one of them is an engine driven alternator, and the other two are driven off a hydraulic PTO system. Okay, uh, and remote mounted basically. Oh, okay, yep. interesting. Okay, so. Um, let's start from the ground up. So you, you've got you've got your tires. What size are these? Are these this is these are Michelin's? This is a 46 inch. Uh, this is a Michelin XZL tire. Okay. It's on an Alcoa aluminum wheel. Um, this is the platform we're looking at is a F750 platform. So these are not produced four wheel drive from the factory. So we convert this unit to four wheel drive. So okay. We put a, a Fabco 14,000 pound front axle in it, a Fabco 231T case, which is divorced. Um, and then we do a custom Hendrickson air ride suspension in the rear to get everything at the same level. So the, the 450 platform, like you can come with like Lariat. Yep. Um, there's options from the factory. Yep. Does, is this one offered like that from the factory? It is, is not. That? So the highest trim level we can get in this is an XLT. Okay. So what we did, because we're you know we're taking this to the next level, we got to take it at least to a Lariat or above. So we actually swapped out the entire interior for King Ranch. Okay. So we've replaced over a hundred components in the interior. Really? Yeah, to, to make it into a King Ranch. Right. So well, I see. all the way down to the seat belts, the visors. I mean, you name it. So you all. get this truck in and you strip it. Oh, we completely strip wow. it. Seats, everything. Wow. I mean, they don't even have power seats in these, so we have to build the the power seats and all that and add seat heating and all that sort of Seat heaters, yeah. Yep. Okay, so what size tire did you say it was? 46 inch. Okay, and then it looks like you've got some Fox suspension. Yep. So talk to me about the suspension. Yeah, so we went to Fox and uh, had them custom engineer the shocks that are on this truck. So they take the weight into account, the size of the tires, unsprung weight, all that, and uh, produce these, you know, huge three inch shocks for this thing. Um, like I said, the the rear is an air ride suspension system, so it allows us to to raise it and lower it. 
which helps us leveling in camp from a fore aft perspective. And then we have hydraulic leveling jacks that'll level it side to side. Okay, and in terms of body armor and protection, is there are there any skid plates under? What's so what? Let me back up. What's your ground clearance? The ground clearance the lowest. is it's 12 inches at the rear differential. Okay. Um, and that's going to be the lowest. Okay. You know, here we've got you know two feet. Yeah, of you've clearance. got a bunch here. But yeah. And then, is there any skid plates or any body armor or any protection on the underneath? You know, there's not a whole lot because everything's kind of so high up in the frame, so okay. it's like, not you know, the, the lowest points that TK is probably, um, it's a super heavy duty unit and you kind of aren't really going to be able to build a skid plate that's going to be sure. stout enough to support sure. a 35,000 pound vehicle. So 35,000 pounds. Yeah, when you're fully loaded truck, with yeah. full of water, you know, we're carrying 250 gallons of water in this really? thing. So yeah. Wow. What's the fuel tank size? 115 gallons. What's the range approximately? So it'll, you'll be in the probably eight to 900 mile range. Wow. Yeah. yeah I'm about 200 miles. Okay. And my forerunner, yeah, with the turtle back. I can carry extra fuel, maybe squeeze 280. Yep. The front end of this, it looks it looks really similar to what I'm, you know, to what I remember for the other one. Um, talk to me about it. I mean, it looks like you've, you've just kind of, like you said, taken it to the next step. Yeah, it's actually interesting. We actually designed this bumper before we designed the bumper really? on the LTS. So we designed this bumper, and what we did is we tried to emulate the lines of the vehicle. So you can see this profile here we've matched that same profile right on yeah, the bumper here uh, so we've really tried to kind of bring that shape of that hood and bring it down in this light bar and we came up with this concept of doing the recessed but curved so pretty common to do a flat recess but to, to do a curved recess light bar this is a fully hand built and kind of hand bent unit here and then that's on top of a just a giant bumper 30,000 pound hydraulic winch in here um, and you'll see it's really actually it was very difficult to make this bumper as quote unquote small as it is you'll see on fire trucks those bumpers will come out yeah. to here so we had to get really creative on how to to make the bumper look proportional to the truck and not make it look huge or come out too far or any of those sorts of things so then you've got you've got recovery points here yep. big tow hooks here you've got your winch here you've got plenty of lighting this is probably your infrared sensor i'm assuming yep infrared camera here camera. front facing camera and then we've got you know our our baja designs fog lights on the outside 50 inch curved baja racing uh the racer edition here and then off the 10 inch off red lights at the bottom Talk to us about the electronics. I see cameras everywhere. Um, I'm sure there's there's a lot going on. There is a lot going on. Yeah, so this truck, there's a 130 some odd separate circuits in this truck wow. between the cab and the camper and everything's gonna talk together. Uh, there's also a kind of a surveillance suite we put in it. So this has cameras on the front, both sides and the rear. Uh, and you can see those from the TV in the bunk or a separate TV in the, the living area. You can also see them on your iPhone. You can set it up with motion detection. So if somebody walks by it, it can actually send you a text message or a video clip of whatever that was walking by your truck. So this thing says four season, all weather capable, down to negative 30. Kind of talk into that. Like what does it take for a vehicle to be capable of handling negative 30 degree temperatures? You know, so the biggest thing, obviously you want to keep the cabin warm just so the occupants are comfortable, but the hard thing to do is plumbing, right? So it's keeping your water tanks from freezing, keeping your lines from freezing, um, all that when it gets really cold. So on this truck, we've, we've kind of approached it from a, a little bit different perspective than we did on our other truck. And this is, uh, it's fully heated with radiant heating. Okay. So there's a big diesel boiler basically. So that's going to heat up fluid. And we're going to circulate that fluid throughout the truck. So, like a radiator. Yep. So it's uh, uh, in the in the cabin we have in-floor heating. So there's going to be heating under the mattress, heating on the main floors. There's also going to be supplemental air heaters. So if you open a door or something, you need to heat it up quickly. You can heat it with those. And then there's also loops that go through all the fresh water tanks, the gray water tank, and the black water tank. 
So those are all heated now um, with hydronic versus, you know, most people are heating it with electric, which uses a lot of power. Okay. So all we have to do is run the diesel boiler and all these other systems will work and we, don't, we draw very little amperage to do that. Where are the water storage tanks? They're actually integrated into the body. So they're molded into the body and they sit in the center line and they drop in between the, the cross members on the frame. Okay. So what we wanted to do was get that weight so center line because it's- exposure to the outside. Yep. They're not in the cabin. Okay. But they are, it's a foam core, insulated foam core, so that the water is insulated. So we've got those three center line tanks. And the cool thing is, is the weight's very low, it's centered. But as you consume that water, you don't change your center of gravity. It, stay, it just gets low. This product is a little bit different model than the LTS, in which this is an all-inclusive concept. So that's a $1.5 million price point, but that's going to get you everything. So it's every option already included. Okay. If there's an option you didn't like, we could we credit you back. But okay. the idea is that it, it includes everything. It includes a custom floor plan. Uh, your choice of finishes in terms of the flooring, the, okay. the color of the cabinetry, the granite or marble or shower, whatever you might choose. Okay. Um, and we have, you know, in-house designers that will guide the customers through the designing the interior. So okay. we kind of, what we'd like to do is take a concept from from the customer and kind of get an idea of what they're going for. And then we like to execute that okay. concept and, and push it all the way through. Right. So. so I know that you're not letting the general public in here but I think that we get to go inside. Is that right? I think we can make that happen. So let's, yeah. can we go take a look inside? Yeah, let's do it. So we're inside the XBHD now. This feels like a really high-end home. I mean, is this quartz countertop? Marble, actually. Marble? Yeah. Nice. Talk to me about this back here. I mean, obviously it's the dining area, but is there anything else going on? Yeah, so kind of the concept of this floor plan was more from a, an entertainment standpoint, kind of using this rear area as a flex space. So we do dining back there. We can relax, read a book, or we can chill out and watch TV. Or we can bring six people over for dinner, for mm -hmm. that matter. So we designed this table, and we wanted the table to be big enough to dine six, uh, so we made it actually slide in both directions, so we could get, get it up out of your way so you get in. Um, also, this will drop down electronically, and this rear space will make a giant bed back here, so you can have some guests over and that sort of thing. The other thing we did was we elevated this space, so um, and the windows go up with it. So it gives you a nice, great commanding view, and it will allow for a large storage garage underneath. And then switches for all your lighting in here. So with our electronics controller, you're able to program master switches. So say if you were staying back here, you could use this one switch. It's gonna turn off all the lights in this back zone. It's all LED lighting, all dimmable sure. throughout. Where the camera is right now, where you guys are, right behind you is the dining area, the table, and what makes into a bed. And now you're looking forward. So that's the back of the vehicle, and now you're looking forward. And so, I mean, this is our, this is our kitchen and, and food prep area, right? Is there anything else going on? So we've got a sink here. Talk to me about this area in general. Yes, yeah, so this is the galley. So we wanted to make it to where there's a lot of counter space, so a nice area to, to cook. So you're cooking, you, you don't feel like you're in an RV. You feel like you're, you're in a house. So you've got windows on both sides, nice open and airy. On this side, we've got uh, a really nice big stainless steel sink, and we've got some different accessories here. So there's a cutting board, a drying rack, uh, a colander will go in here, or a, a prep bowl, so we can, you know, kind of be prepping our food and putting the rinds in there or whatever. It's a great uh, use of space. Yeah, so we're trying to use use everything to the full capacity. We've got a slide out trash storage and a recycling system here. Um, on this side is our fridge, so slide out drawer fridge. The opposing side is our freezer. So this thing is even equipped with an ice maker. So nice. keep your cocktails nice and cold. As we move forward, you've got integrated silverware. You have a full set of shoe knives with a, a six piece set for, for the steak knives. You have your cookware in here, your colanders, your mixing bowls, all that. Everything has a spot, nothing moves around. Above on this side we have all of the dishware. So same thing here. It's all going to be our quiet ride system. So 
Everything has its place. Nothing moves. Nothing moves around, nothing rattles. Rattles, wiggles, yeah, yep. all that. And then on this side, sorry I left this out, but this is the three burner induction cooktop. Okay. So uh, it's gonna heat things really evenly. It's gonna boil water really quickly. And the cool thing is you can boil a pot of water and then you can put your hair on yeah. it. So it's not hot at all. Convection microwave above, so we can actually bake items in there. Right. So we could cook a turkey, we could bake cookies, right. that sort of thing. It's, and it actually has a, the thing I really like, it has a, a vent on it that we actually ducted outside. So okay. um, a lot of times when you're cooking in a small space, it's going to yeah. get really smoky. It's yep. going to get really but this smell actually, like bacon, whatever. We can actually duct it outside and, and be able to really cook. True ventilation. Yeah. And you've got a lot of little storage cubbies too. You get some storage cubbies here. Um, you know, and, and is this additional storage up here, I assume? So this is actually where some of the components reside for that okay. digital switching system. So Got this it. is our, these are the modules that control the different okay. circuits throughout the truck. And um, so I remember from the last time when I spent some time with you guys on the other vehicle, we got a chance to look at some of the back end and he was like, you know, kind of like Apple, we want everything to be beautiful on the inside as well, even though yeah. you don't see it all the yeah, time. Yeah, totally. And I, you know, and, and, I, and I'm a big believer in that design is, it has to be, beautiful from the top to the bottom and it works better for functionality as well right yeah. because you know everything's clean you know everything works you know everything is in this right spot yeah. i am not very good at design i'm not very good at making stuff beautiful that's why my office is a mess <laughs> this is not my office this is somebody else's vehicle and it looks awesome <laughs> what's happening here this is in the wall yeah so we kind of the wall is only it's only this thick so so we kind of we knew we were gonna have this partition wall here and we we're trying to figure out well how do we get a tv here but then on the opposing side of it, have a shower. And I didn't want to just surface mount the TV because I think if we were able to recess it, it's going to have a lot higher end look. And when it's off, it kind of just blends into the wall. So you don't have this, you know, obnoxious TV kind of sticking out in your hallway and that sort of thing. So we came up with this system to recess it. It gave us room to put our center channel above. And then our plumbing for our shower is actually all behind there. So it's still all accessible through these various doors and all the plumbing routes around and down to the to the base. This is all going to be go through our Bose surround sound system, right? Okay. We have a Bose surround sound in here that's going to be a 5.1, so we have a subwoofer actually hidden kind of under this refrigerator on this side. You get your rear, rear channels back there, front channels here. Uh, the Bose unit and everything is going to be over here, so, so that's um, control panel you've got your things. control panel there, you've got an HDMI port right on the front there, so if you wanted to plug in an auxiliary source of any type, you could do that. It's got direct TV on it, so satellite TV, we've got a separate entertainment system in the front, so we can watch two different channels at the same time. We've got an Apple TV, we've got the surveillance system in there as well. There is a really gentle breeze flowing through here right now. Now it's 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 pretty warm outside it's not super warm it's like 75 degrees but it's hot in the sun and it's is, is there ventilation on right now no so just the windows inside stuff right now like inside my tent for instance is bacon right because we're in the sun right now it feels extremely pleasant in here is there anything special with that i mean is there anything and i'm glad you brought up the windows actually it was a, a big design thing that we did that, that you won't see a lot and that's with how many windows you see in this truck. So you come in here and you kind of wonder why it feels as big as it does and it's because it's so light and open with these big windows. So what's going on <laughs> so what's going on right here? So this is kind of the pantry area. So there's two slide out pantries here. So these guys are slide out like so. Uh, below it, food storage on this side it's gonna be a slide out espresso machine. Nice. So this will make lattes, cappuccinos, whatever you want with a touch of a button. And then below that is our laundry center. So washer dryer combination unit. So you can throw your stuff in there, uh, kind of set it and forget it. And next thing you know, you've got some clean clothes. I'm looking at this Nest thermostat. So mm -hmm. you've got central heat and cool. So we talked about this a minute ago. How does this plug in to or work in with whatever you've got going on here? Yeah, so we, I wanted to, when we designed this, I wanted to make it a lot easier for the end user to operate the heating and cooling. I wanted it to be integrated through the same interface. So the heating and the cooling is just controlled by this. Just like at your house, you would just select it, go in, select heat versus cool and set your temperature. And that's all you have to do. Um, so that in conjunction with being in camp mode or being in away mode will allow you to run those systems. But if you wanted to turn all that off, you could just do a systems off mode. It would shut all that down. You wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, so the back end of it is actually fairly complicated how that all ties in. Right. Um, 
but the idea was to take care of that complexity on the back end so the customer doesn't have to. What can happen though is air conditioning uses a lot of power. Sure. It's the biggest power resource on this entire vehicle is the air conditioning. So you are going to use up your battery. Even with full solar, you're still going to use battery. So we engineered a system where when that battery starts coming down and when it gets down to 30%, we can actually enable a system that will automatically start the engine and recharge those batteries in a half hour. So that's the connect, because you told yeah. us that a minute ago, yep. and that's the connect, so I was wondering, so yeah, it runs on electricity, it, it's, it's, it's electric power, mm -hmm. the, the, air, the cooling system, and uh, so yeah, when it drains down, then it just charges back yeah, up when it needs drains to. drains down, starts up, charges back up, and you're good. Now on the heat side, that's all diesel okay. fired, right? So that giant diesel boiler we talked about, that's gonna heat up the fluid that's gonna get circulated through the floor, through the water tanks all that sort of stuff and it's gonna the cool thing about radiant heating is it heats up everything in here so not does it it doesn't just heat up the air but it's gonna heat these cabinets up it's gonna heat the countertops up so this vehicle down in negative 10 degrees the countertops are gonna feel the same temperature they do right now it's like so, true ambient yeah. Yeah. and you're not gonna feel those drafts and that cold air that you'll feel in it you know in a vehicle that doesn't have a, a radiant system We've got all these panels over here. We've got this awesome, decadent, elegant, is what I meant to say, shower. Um, I mean, this looks like a high-end spa. So when we designed this, we, we wanted to make very much a master suite area, right? So the first thing you'll notice is this, this door here that leads to our toilet, this actually opens up and this is gonna separate the two spaces. Um, so you kind of have your own space. So you have guests over or whatever. They can be out here. You can have your own space up here. Is there anything that holds that? Yeah. Yep, there's a latch here, so that'll latch in. Nice. We've got all our switches here for all our lighting back here. And then we really wanted to spend some time and energy on the shower. So you'll notice there's full stand-up height in the shower. Um, so if you're a tall guy, tall gal, you're going to have plenty of room there. We have a rain head shower, uh, another handheld shower. And again, we've got continuous hot water in this. So if you wanted to take a 250 gallon shower, you could. Uh, it's got a you know, real glass door in it, tempered half inch glass. So we get that, yeah, with a, a positive catch latch there. So we get a really high end look and we do that by using real materials, right? So we have real ceramic tile, real marble tile on the floor. And we use it sparingly in terms of we don't have the whole thing tiled but we want to have those touches of, of real material to give you that real feel of luxury and elegance. That's cool. All right, so talk to me about where we're at right now. So so just to give you frame of reference, our shower's right here, the toilet room uh, and the, and the uh, door wall partition is right here and the back of the vehicle is behind behind you, behind the viewer. And so here's the forward of the vehicle. We've got a bed up here. Talk to us about what's happening here. Yeah, so this is kind of the vanity area, right? So we wanted kind of a dedicated space so you could brush your teeth, wash your hands, get ready for bed, that sort of thing. Right. So nice sink here. It's gonna be actually raised, mounted on the countertop, kind of a nice style, nice look to it there. That same backsplash we saw from up there. So we are kind of carrying that Consistent. through the vehicle. Nice window here for ventilation. We've got another uh, a 32 inch TV in this case with that same recess treatment to it. Another surround sound system up here. So separate surround sound. So we've got 5.1 surround sound in here. I can link the two surround sounds together and wow. really get rocking in here. Wow. Um, and then on this side is our closet. So hanging closet up top. And then we've got this large drawer bank down here. So. Okay. Big, you know, really deep drawers. Oh, wow. Tons this of storage. Right across, yeah. Yep. And then we also, you know, in making it this master suite, we wanted to make it easy to get up to the to the cab. So um, the lower portion actually will open up as a staircase, and I'll just open it up a little bit. Yeah, so I was just so, noticing that, because he yeah. showed us the stairs a second, showed me the stairs a second ago, but you have drawers in the stairs. Yeah, so the drawers, and the cool thing too is the drawers will operate whether it's open or closed. That's a you really know, cool. So you can you can always get to your stuff. Yeah, maximization of the space. Really and when it's closed, into... oops, sorry. When it's closed, it just looks like a bank of drawers. Yeah. Right? So. And this swings open, so that's just more storage. Yeah. So that and actually the lid of that opens, so that's designed to be the hamper. Okay. So you open it, put your clothes in when it's full. When it's open to. Yeah. 
take, okay. take all your clothes out and uh, mm. throw them in your laundry machine. And then this is just like a closet pantry yep. store, just like a yeah. hanging closet sort of yep. deal. Where you keep your clothes. That's right. And then obviously up here is the master bed, right? So a huge king size bed. Um, we wanted to make this nice and light and open and airy. So this actually has about six inches more clearance than our, our yeah. smaller model does. Ducted air conditioning up here. Windows on both sides, the front, and then the roof hatch above. So it really, you know, you a lot of people are worried about feeling claustrophobic and that right. sort of thing. And this, you really don't. It really feels very open. All right, so we are in the cab. And it's nice. I mean, and it's big. Like it's, like it's really big and spacious. Rear locking differential? Yep. The other one doesn't have that. It doesn't, yeah, no. I these, remember asking about that, that's yep. cool. Yeah, so from the factory with a, a locking rear diff, so. I tend to get distracted when I see cool things, so. <laughs> yeah. This is entirely new. You can't get this from the factory. Nope. Steering wheel even? I mean, is Steer, this? All the way down to the steering column, in fact, so. Really? Yeah, we went to swap out the steering wheel at the King Ranch and it doesn't made up to the 750 column because it's a steering wheel out of a F250. Huh. So we actually had to swap the steering column as well to make it all work. We really just wanted it to feel like a pickup when you were in it. Okay. So you'll, you'll find that when you get into a lot of these, what they call medium duty trucks or heavy duty trucks, the interiors are not very well f appointed. So okay. there's a lot of exposed metal, those sorts of things. It's just very uh, kind of commercial industrial grade. So we wanted this to feel more of like just a pickup. So that's what we were kind of doing with the King Ranch interior with the seven way electric seats, all that. Um, we kind of continue that with our, our built-in console. So this is a, something we build. We've got switches up here for the seat heat, the air, air parking brakes. So this is all an air brake system in this truck. Um, these are switches for our fog lights, off-road lights, and light bar. Um, switches up here for our four-wheel drive, our four-low, our front camera, and our forward-facing you know, forward infrared camera there. Um, above it is going to be our navigation slash stereo. So uh, we can do our Garmin turn by turn on this one. Uh, we can list, we have Apple CarPlay, we have, you know, all the goodies there. But as we move down here, we've got our off-road navigation system. And this, this Lowrance HDS9 will actually interface not only with that navigation side of it, but also with the C-Zone system in the back. So it's pretty cool. We can go in here and I can go into C-Zone. And I can control anything from the back, uh, from up here. So say we left our lights on, I can just go ahead and turn all of our cabin lighting off from back here. Or I can go back in and I can say, oh, I wanna turn my lights on in the back. Uh, we can put this into a, a jack mode. So I'd put that in a jack mode and then I'd be able to run my hydraulic jacks down and level the vehicle. So there's hydraulic, interesting. Same with the winch. So the winch is hydraulic, but instead of having to go through all these processes of turning on a PTO, engaging this, engaging that, I can just hit one button and I'm ready to winch. I uh, use my switch over here and run the winch. The oh, winch switch is right over, uh, all right. Yep, right by my knee. You can also run it with an iPad, so we could actually control our leveling jacks with an iPad from the outside of the vehicle or from that's the back awesome. of the vehicle or whatever you want to do. So that's kind of the C-Zone side. The other cool thing about this is it has a dashboard, and I can see some really cool information here, and I can customize this for whatever I want. Um, so in this case, we put altitude in because I always kind of like seeing what altitude I'm at. This is going to be our, our ground speed, our GPS position. This is just our heading from a compass standpoint. Um, in this case, we put our fresh water tank level, our black water level, and then this is going to show us our amps, our battery voltage, and our state of charge percentage. Okay. So we can see when the engine's running, you know, we're getting somewhere where are our battery's at. Um, and this is all, again, pulling information from now the low ranch GPS side and that C-Zone side, and we're kind of right. integrating it here, and it uh, makes it very cool. GPS. We can load in topo maps, uh, we can do Sirius XM uh, weather on this, so it'll actually overlay a Doppler radar map, which is satellite-based, so even if we don't have cell service, we can still have right. our navigation and our well weather, which are right. huge things to know when you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. You can see what's going on. And you've got dual fuel tanks. I can see you, you can switch from, is that left to right? Yep. So, you so a there's tank on a 65 gallon tank on the left, a 50 gallon tank on the right. 
Uh, this is gonna be your air pressure indicator here for our air brakes. Okay. So that's all uh, powered off an of engine driven compressor okay. on this truck. Uh, it has an exhaust brake as well, which is really nice. So you can run that. You can put it in manual and run your transmission um, just here. And this is a different transmission than they're using in the Super Duty line. This is the heavy duty version of the Torque Shift 6. So a okay. uh, completely different transmission okay. to kind of hold up to the higher gross vehicle weight. How does it drive? I mean, it's a big vehicle, right? I mean, this is like a... After you've driven it for a couple of hours, you kind of just feel like you're in a pickup. So the, the visibility is really good. We've got these big mirrors. Our body isn't super wide and we've got that curve to it so we can see very well. We've got um, our convex mirrors. One thing we didn't touch on is the blind spot cameras. So actually when you turn on your turn signal, it'll pull up a camera and show you your blind ones, spot. Yeah. Uh, we've got that front facing camera so you can see if you're pulling up close to someone, that rear facing camera. So once you get used to it, it actually doesn't drive as big as it looks, okay. if that makes sense. The gearing in this is pretty low. So we have 614 gears in the diffs. Okay. Um, so that's primarily how in a big truck like this, how we're going to take that torque from that 6.7 and get more out of it as we're going to gear it lower. All right, so talk to me about what's happening in the outside of the vehicle. So yeah, we, we came up with a kind of an exterior kitchen concept on this. So we wanted to bring it up a level and actually have hot and cold water. So we've got a hot and cold water sink with a sprayer here so we can prepare whatever. Uh, induction cooktop. And then we actually have a smoker in this truck. So this is a, a Traeger wood pellet smoker. Uh, it's gonna run off, off of wood pellets, obviously, but nothing out here uses propane. So all electric and the wood pellets. So you don't have to worry about, about propane. So this will kind of slide out to allow you to open the lid. Um, this is all kind of housed in a stainless steel fixture. So the sink's actually integrated into that, which you can see. And then a nice cutting board on the end. Uh, so that, that'll slide in, and then this whole unit slide back. So you go. So at the box, this is your recovery storage cabinet, basically, right? Yeah, so we've got our axe here, a shovel. Um, we've got remotes for our spare tire winch and our hitch. And then we have the whole spare tire hoist assembly here. So that'll actually install into this hitch receiver here, and it'll allow us to lower the spare tire down like So it this. connects up with the spare, brings yeah. it down. And there's actually a winch located behind this that'll lower that. Huh. Um, the hitch is cool too because the obviously this bumper is pretty high, so the hitch actually drops down and gives you a hitch point at a normal height so you can tow a normal trailer right. or flat tow a Jeep or something like that. Then we've got our LED tail lights, um, Baja Designs, backup lights, integrated flush mount, rear facing steel bumper. Right here. Well earlier I was wondering, you know, like if I had a suitcase, where would I put it? I would put it in here. This is great and you've got you know, plenty of room. I mean he's got some, you know, obviously plastic totes to keep stuff. I mean this is this is amazing. Yeah, so tons of great storage. Storage for, for all your toys, your yeah. chairs, your bikes all that kind of stuff so this is a really high-end vehicle and like we talked about earlier this isn't going to be for everybody you know and you know i mean the kind of person that buys something like this they want something like this and they've got sure. the ability to do it and uh you know like i said it's not for everybody but i think it's a really magnificent manifestation of what you could actually do I and mean, you're not going to take this i mean i think some of the capabilities are you could probably take it in some places in moab or some of these other places. but it's like this isn't you don't buy this to go rock crawling you still want to do something like that in a jeep but you can go a lot of interesting places with this obviously you have to take clearance into consideration and and uh, you know on the bottom and on the top but it's like at the end of the day like there's a lot of places that you wouldn't really want to take a regular rv to that's exactly right. Yeah. That you can take something like this to, no problem. Yeah, you'd be able to get to a lot of places with a Jeep or a 4Runner, but that's not what this is intended to do. You're not, you're not gonna go rock crawling in this. No. The idea here is to give somebody that wants a luxury recreational vehicle and take it places that you wouldn't take normally an RV, you would normally take an RV. Sure, so we could go anyway. to like so, yeah. Monument Valley with it or you know yeah. Valley of the Gods or we could go out on the sand dunes in Moab, if yeah. you wanted, you know, where you would never take your class A. The other people, the other the other thing you can do with it that people don't think about uh, is inclement weather, right? If, if it's snowing or maybe you're a ski guy and you want to chase snow, 
you can't do that in a rear wheel drive diesel pusher. No? It's just not going to get you there. So, you know, the four wheel drive isn't always used for something as extreme as rock crawling, right. but it can be used for, you know, just bad roads uh, and, and that right. sort of thing to kind of get you where you want to be. Right. Well, I really, really appreciate your time, Ty. Yeah, this likewise. is awesome. This is an amazing experience to be able to see um, see what you guys have done with this new um, with this new platform. And uh, I'm super, obviously, super excited to see what you guys do in the future. Thank you a lot. Uh, thank you a lot. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, man. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yep. I know this is my longest video to date and I really appreciate you hanging in there. One of the things that I really, really like doing, and this isn't for everybody, I really like like super detailed rig walk around videos. And I feel like that's kind of like become a little bit of like what I do. Like I don't do these short five minute real quick walk around videos. I do like really, really detailed ones. And to be honest, they're pretty exhausting to edit. They take a lot of time to edit and it's kind of hard for me to get through. So I really appreciate you hanging in there. This was not intended to be consumed all in one sitting, if you think about it. I mean, you really have to sit down and, and commit to like a 45 minute video. But something like this, I guess I look at this as, as kind of like a resource. It's something that, that you can kind of come back to and reference and I don't know, just revisit from time to time to kind of maybe get some ideas or like, how did they do this or like whatever. Tyler, thank you so much for spending so much time with me. I really, really appreciate it. I could tell you were getting tired at the end. I was getting tired at the end as well. Um, these take a long time to actually do a couple of hours really. Um, so yeah, again, my name's Jason Kirchie. This is our YouTube channel. Uh, if, you're, if you're new here, it would mean a, the world to me, really, if you would subscribe. And uh, you know, I, I, hope you, I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, and I, hope you're, I hope you're having a wonderful day too, and we'll, we'll see you in the, in the next video. Mm -hmm.